we'll talk about dark cockpit concept. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Captain SQ, where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures, and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 Emergency Electrical Configuration Remaining Systems and Steps to Take, Part 1. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals and this video is merely a guide. Before we start, do smash the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Okay, let's dive in. The loss of AC bus 1 and 2 is an emergency situation and LAN as up in red will be displayed which signifies a critical situation. Land as soon as possible at the nearest suitable airport at which a safe landing can be made. A mayday should be declared to ATC and all ACAM actions should be completed prior to an approach. Significant items to consider are loss of autopilot and auto trust, flight control law in alternate law and direct law with gear down, loss of copy indication and flight time will be limited to batteries only with gear down. Let's take an example over here. You are cruising, all is well, then suddenly the cockpit went dark. We'll talk about dark cockpit concept. The first pilot who notices announces title of failure and cancels the master warning. With the loss of AC bus 1 and 2, the aircraft electrical supply will be on batteries only. Only the AC and DC essential bus are supplied from the hot bus. Only PFD1 and upper EWD are available and CM1 becomes PF or whoever that is sitting on the left. Autopilot, flight directors and auto trust are lost and CM1 will have to manually fly the aircraft. The RAT, the ram air turbine, automatically extends and powers the blue hydraulic circuit which drives the emergency generator and this will take approximately 8 seconds. Once the RAT has dropped and powered up the emergency generator, the AC and DC essential shed buses are powered and the one now becomes available. All equipment that remains powered is supplied via the circuit breakers on the overhead panel except for equipment that is supplied by hot buses. Turn flight directors off and select track FPA. The aircraft will be in alternate law. Once a safe flight path is established, ECAM actions should be carried out. As only the EWD is available, disciplined use of the ECAM control panel is essential. The minimum speed for the RAT is 140 knots. Below 140 knots, the RAT stalls and the aircraft returns to flight on batteries only. Attempt a reset of generator 1 and 2 by turning off then on. If unsuccessful, set bus tie to off to isolate both generators. With the bus tie off, a further attempt to reset the generators is performed. As engines are fed by gravity fuel feed, select engine mode selector to ignition. Only VHF-1 and HF-1 are available for transmission. Cockpit interphone and cabin interphone remains available. Both ACP-1 and 2 remain available. The CM-2 can still transmit through their ACP. Only transponder 1 is available. ADIRS 2 and 3 will automatically be lost after 5 minutes, so switching them off will save battery charge. Fuel is gravity feed, the gravity fuel feed QRH procedure should be followed and fuel consumption is increased and FMS fuel predictions are unreliable. The crew should refer to the QRH if an immediate landing is not available. Resetting the FAC-1 restore characteristics speed displays on the PFD and recovers the rudder trim. Rudder trim indication is also unavailable. Cooling air is supplied to the avionics bay by the air conditioning system and exhausted overboard through the extractor valve. And special note, if you are flying an IAE powered aircraft, the engines will be N1 degraded mode and there is no N1 limit protection. So an overboost can occur with the truss levers in full forward position. So care must be taken when selecting truss on a go-around. Let us take a look at the status page. Flight control law will revert to direct law when the gear is lowered. 
A clear reading of status is essential to assess the aircraft status and properly sequence actions during the approach. Flaps and slats are slow as only SFCC1 is applied. Spoilers 1, 2 and 5 are inoperative which will affect the landing distance. Fuel gravity feed, center tank fuel unavailable, normal brake and anti-skid are inoperative. Nose wheel steering is inoperative and reverser 2 is inoperative. A summary for handling the procedure is included in the QRH which will be referred to upon completion of the ECAM procedure. The ELAC EMER config system remaining list is also available in the QRH. And that's all for part 1. Do smash the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and I'll see you in part 2 of this lesson.